I would like to welcome Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride, who holds two postgraduate degrees in neurology and human nutrition. She lives in Cambridge, United Kingdom, where she holds her clinic. She is the creator of the term GAPS, or Gut, gut and Psychology Syndrome, and Gut and Physiology Syndrome, which establishes a connection between functioning of the digestive system and functioning of the rest of the body. She has written two books, Gut and Psychology Syndrome, Natural Treatment of Autism, ADHD, Dyslexia, Dyspraxia, Depression, and Schizophrenia, and her second book, Put Your Heart in Your Mouth, What Really Causes Heart Disease and What We Can Do to Prevent and Even Reverse It. Dr. Campbell McBride has a large following around the world with patients and health practitioners adopting her GAPS nutritional protocol for treating disease. Please welcome her today. Thank you. I, I can't say enough how delighted I am to be here today with people who I consider to be the most enlightened in the Western world on the subject of food and health. <laughs> Without doubt, you people know more about this than any doctor in the world or any other person who is supposed to know. Thank you very much. Can you all hear me very well? Oh good, so the microphones are working. Someone said no. Can you hear me? Not, not so well? Is that better? Well, I'm actually speaking more into this little one. Is that, yeah. Is that better? Okay, that's good. So, gut and psychology syndrome and gut and physiology syndrome. Because before I start, I'd like to know how many of you actually read the book? Oh, great. <laughs> so, there's a lot of people that read the book, but some people haven't. Uh, I've got the good news. Uh, finally, I've updated gut and psychology syndrome. So it's 100 pages thicker now. And it's got um, a new chapter on epilepsy. It's got a new chapter on eating disorders, anorexia nervosa, and bulimia, and all the other eating disorders. It's got a new chapter on failure to thrive. It's got a new part uh, at the end, part four, on preconception, pregnancy, and new baby. Because that was a question that a lot of people were asking. Um, I've rewritten the diet part of the book, so the introduction diet and the full GAPS diet and how to come off the GAPS diet is all in there now. I have rewritten the dairy section, so there's much more information and, and a lot of questions clarified in the dairy section. I've rewritten fats, the section on fats and cholesterol and um, cod liver oil, vitamin A and vitamin D. So a lot of the book is new. So it's a fairly new book, and I'm glad I've finally done it. I've been procrastinating long enough. And I do uh, work, I am working on gut and physiology syndrome. A lot of people are asking me, when is this book going to be out? I'm working on it. Uh, I believe that before the baby is born, nine months have to pass. <laughs> Otherwise, the baby won't be right. <laughs> the same with the book. So it needs to ripen before it comes out, so it is a good book. So let's begin. As Victoria already said, all diseases begin in the gut, and gut in psychology and gut in physiology syndrome establishes a connection between the functioning of the digestive system and the functioning of the rest of the body. I absolutely believe what Hippocrates said all those thousands of years ago, that all diseases do begin in the gut. Our digestive system holds the roots of our health. And if the roots of the tree are not healthy, if they are sickly, the rest of the tree is not going to be healthy. No matter how far and how high away the little branches might be and the leaves might be and the crown of the tree might be, it's not going to thrive if the roots deep inside the soil are not healthy. And that's what our digestive system is. It holds the roots of our health. Before we talk about the gut, we have to talk first about what lives in there and what takes care of it and what ensures that the roots of our health are vibrant and healthy and work properly. We need to talk about gut flora. More and more people in this world are now informed that we have bacteria inside our digestive system. 
Well, an adult on average carries about two and a half kilograms of bacteria, of, of microbes, not only bacteria, but viruses and fungi and protozoa and worms and various other parasites and creatures living inside our digestive system. Recent research coming out of uh, Scandinavia has demonstrated that only 10% Oh, something happened with microphones. Only 10% of your body is you. The rest is gut flora. So we are just a shell holding this world inside us. And we're at the mercy of it if we don't take care of it. It's a symbiotic relationship. We, we ignore these chaps at, at our peril, without doubt. So let's have a look. What do they do there and what, what their functions are? The number of functions that they fulfill. Is this too loud? Is this, good? Is this good now? Okay, good. We can't hear you. You still can't hear me. Is that better? Okay. So the number of functions that our gut flora fulfills play such important, such vital roles for us that if one day we decided to sterilize our gut, we probably wouldn't survive. If you put the gut lining, flat. It would cover a tennis court. Some people say a football field. I think a tennis court. It's a big enough surface for anything harmful from the environment to get inside our temple, inside our body, and have an effect on it. That is why Mother Nature has coated every square millimeter of that tennis court with a thick band of bacteria. And if these bacteria are the right kind of bacteria, the beneficial bacteria, and not only bacteria, as I say, but viruses, and beneficial fungi, and beneficial protozoa, and beneficial worms. There are such things as beneficial worms as well. Then this thick band will not allow anything harmful from your food, from your drink, from the air, from the pollution, from anything that your body takes into the digestive tract, will not allow these things through. They produce every antibiotic under the sun. They produce every antifungal substance, antiviral substances, antiprotozoal substances. They produce substances which neutralize cancer-producing chemicals and other toxic chemicals that we might be consuming. There has been an interesting research done where two groups of rats were examined and one group of rats was given organic mercury in the drink, in their drinking water. Very toxic levels of organic mercury. Before doing that, the researchers have treated one group of rats with a powerful antibiotic to wipe out their gut flora. The other group of rats had healthy, intact gut flora. When both groups of rats drank water with organic mercury in it, only about 1% of it got into the bloodstream of rats with normal, healthy gut flora. When the rats whose gut flora was destroyed had more than 90% of this mercury racing around their bloodstream. So your major, major barrier in heavy metal absorption and anything toxic that comes in is your own gut flora. They bind these things. If they cannot neutralize them, they would chelate them. From the Greek word kele, which is a claw of a crab, it would grab hold of this molecule of mercury or molecule of lead or arsenic or any other, other toxic molecule and hold it until it takes it out of your system in stool. Because most of what our stool is, which comes out of us, is bacteria. It's our own gut flora, which dies out. These uh, creatures live only a few days. They die out, and they get shed off, replaced by newly born healthy microbes. And this dead bacteria, they come out in the a, in a form of stool. And whatever they've bound, whatever they grabbed hold of, they would hold until they come out, until they leave your body. The governments in this country and the government in, the sta in, in my country, in England and in many other countries, have published a statement that because we've polluted our oceans with mercury and PCBs and many other chemicals, that we should, down that, that we should not eat fish, that we should cut down on eating fish. In fact, they've published recommendations of, on how much fish it is allowed for people to eat per day or per week. Where the clinical practice shows that people who eat fish regularly and don't limit their consumption of fish are actually overall healthier than people who limit it. Because fish contains a lot of beneficial nutrition in them. It is your own gut flora that would protect you from mercury and PCBs and all other toxic things which were pumped into the oceans. It's only people with abnormal gut flora that would absorb these things. 
Apart from protection of the gut lining, health of integrity of the gut relies...